Okay, let's read Ephesians chapter 5, verses 22 to 33, reading. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands, as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the saviour of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be unto their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but it should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. For no man ever hateth his own flesh, but nourisheth and cherisheth it, even as the Lord the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself, and the wife see that she reverence her husband. May God bless the reading of his word. Let us turn to God in prayer. Let us pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can come to thy house after a week in school, at work, Lord, to study your word and to understand more of what you require of us and how we ought to live. Lord, we pray again for cleansing, for washing in the blood of Christ. We know we have sinned against you in many ways, in thoughts, in words, in actions, in deeds. Lord, we pray that you will show us. Lord, we want to confess, we want to repent, that you may be pleased to be in our midst in the house tonight and to use each um, Bible teacher to teach our word clearly, to feed your children. So, Father, we pray that um, you will edify the saints. And Lord, we pray that you help us tonight to understand this very important topic on boy-girl relationship in this stage of our lives. Lord, may you um, grant us biblical principles and be obedient to them. So be with us from the youngest to most elderly, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so the topic is BGR. Right, just in case those of you who have not attended before, what does BGR stand for? What does BGR stand for? Very good. From the notes you will see boy girl relationship. We always call it BGR, BGR, right? Okay, so it's going to be a QA session. You submitted some questions. Uh, some questions I put there to help guide um, the topic along. Now, first of all, <clears throat> every year we have BGR session, correct? Do you remember? No. You remember? Uh, every year we have a topic. Actually, we decided that we'll do so because this is an area which constantly um, troubles young people. And many churches um, do not teach this topic. And as a result, um, if we don't, young people can end up in wrong relationships. Young people can end up in eventually bad marriages later in life. Right, so it's very important that we cover this topic every year. Um, and please submit questions. So little questions this time. Now, question number one. This I put in. Okay. Now, why do we cover these BGR sessions every year? Why? Why do you think so? Now, I want to clarify. First and foremost, we do it not because we think that having a boyfriend or a girlfriend is important. Okay, write that down, the young ones especially. <laughs> we are not saying that it's very important that you must have a boyfriend or a girlfriend. All right? That's not why we cover it every year. Neither are we saying, by covering it every year, that being in courtship, being in a relationship is good and important. That's why we cover it. It is not that as well. All right? Neither are we saying, so I give you all three knots. Huh? Not, the third knot is, not, we are not saying that being married is better than being single. Understand? All right. So we cover it every year. Not because we are trying to say it's important to be in a relationship. We cover it because, now the reasons why. Because the Christian must understand God's model 
of a marriage. The Christian must understand God's model of a marriage. And in understanding the model, then you will understand the roles and responsibilities, right? So we cover it because we want you to understand the roles and responsibilities. Then with that, then you will know how to choose if you enter into a relationship for marriage. Then you know how to choose, correct? We do not want, and we cover it because we do not want young people to end up in a relationship prematurely. You know it's prematurely? It means before you're ready for relationship, you end up in a relationship. Neither do we want you all to end up in a wrong kind of relationship. Okay? So that's why we cover this session every year. Now, let's start with the first question that you ask. Now, how do you know? Okay, question number two. Huh? Question number two. How do you know if God has placed a genuine interest in your heart towards someone? Well, this question is very long, right? The first part. How do you know it's a genuine interest that God put in your heart towards someone? Are there any examples of this in the Bible? What is the difference between this and just having emotions towards the person? I guess the difference between genuine interest and just emotions. Um, when would this be considered sinful lust? Okay, so a few parts. Now, let's answer bit by bit. Now, how do you know if God has placed a genuine interest in your heart? How do you know? Ilim, how do you know? No, okay, Ilim too young. <laughs> yeah. Hey, before I forget, now the very young ones, I forget, there's something else I'm supposed to say for question number one, please write down. Whether you are at the age to be in a relationship or not, it is important that you understand this topic so that you are prepared when the time comes. Understand? So that you are prepared when the time comes. What is the age that you are ready to be in courtship? Chloe, can you guess? 10, 11, 12, 16, 18, 21, 30? No, okay. Susan, hey, no, Shenwei, let me move down. When you're mature enough, okay? We all always feel we are very mature, right? Anna, are you mature? See? <laughs> we all feel we're mature. Susan, what do you think? What is mature? When you're spiritually mature and also independent Spiritually mature and also independent enough. So when are you ready? When you're spiritually mature and independent. What do you mean by independent, Susan? Um, being able to care for family. When you are being when you are able to care for a family. So why do you think why do you think that's important, Abigail? Why then? Because I'm sure you know that most people, even in churches in Singapore, when they are 15, 13 years old, they have boyfriend and girlfriend already, right? Very common in school, even in churches. Yeah. So why do you think it's when you're independent? Uh, I think because you get the relationship with marriage in mind as an animal, so it's like I'm ready to go the way I guess. Right. So Cornelius, do you hear the answer? I must make sure I engage you all. Uh. You must pay attention, all right? This is an important topic to you as well, all right? Because you will grow. Will you grow up one day? Okay. You grow up one day and you might be in a situation where you need to decide. So you must understand. So why must someone be independent before they enter into a relationship? Or at least at that time frame. Because they can care for someone. They are getting married. Relationship are for the pur is for the purpose of entering into marriage, okay? It is not to have a boyfriend for fun, to go out and do things together. It's for marriage. So are you ready to get married at your age, Cornelius? No. What about you, the younger one, Caleb? Are you ready? Are you sure, Elim? No? Okay, the tallest one, Jennifer. No. Right? So, but your, your school friends, Jennifer, do your school friends have boyfriends and girlfriends? They talk about it already. 
Right. So if you're not ready for marriage, then you should not. Okay, you should not. Because it's for that purpose. Now actually, why else? Uh, spiritually mature. Why must be spiritually mature, uh, uh, um, Brenda? Okay, God, so relationship is for marriage. Marriage, she talks about children already. So God will entrust children to you in marriage, right? Then you better be spiritually mature. Otherwise, you won't be able to bring up godly seed, right? So all these reasons, right? Actually, spiritually mature, why else? Um, next, uh, Clara. Why else must be spiritually mature? If not, the relationship won't glorify God. What do you mean? That's true. So if you're spiritually not mature, Anna, two persons are spiritually not mature. Although they are independent, okay, they are going to start working or they're working already, but they enter into a relationship, but they're spiritually very weak, very immature. What will happen? Their relationship will fall apart, yes. And worse, if they get married, they won't have a spiritual family, right? Okay, so all these reasons. So you must know these reasons, all right? Okay, so must be interested. Now, let's then move um, to this part. How do you know if God has placed a genuine interest or is just pure emotions? How do you know? Okay, next. Um, Samantha. I know I'm supposed to answer, but I'll ask you to answer. <laughs> Because I want you all to think. How do you know if God has placed a genuine interest in your heart towards someone? And there's a difference between this and emotions. Because what's the difference between just a genuine interest or just having emotions? How would you know? Saved by the bell? <laughs> How would you know? Okay, so, so Ilim, Ilim, why are you laughing? Ilim. The question is, how do you know if God has put a genuine interest in someone's heart or is it just purely emotions? Alright? So, as Samantha says that we should check what we feel against God's word and see whether what we feel is in line with God's word. Right? That's what you said, right? But you're not answering the question. Because if you, if you ask, if you give the answer, then the question would be, how should I choose? Right? It should be how should I choose? I should choose based on God's word, which we'll cover after that, afterwards. So you did not answer the question. Why did you choose to do that? Why choose not to answer this question? But you answer but you answer another question. Why? No, that, that the question would have been would have been how do you choose? But it's not how do you know about emotions and feelings? Why do you choose to answer like that? Because, because emotions can be deceiving. All right? Because emotions can be deceiving. Now, I, I always do this to you all, right? I always lead you all down this road, down, down, down. And I challenge you to see whether you are clear in your convictions. Now, that's the right answer. Because this is the wrong question. Understand? This is a question that a Christian should not ask. This is a wrong question. Do you understand a wrong question? This is a question that Christians should not be thinking about. Because our emotions, our feelings, our interest can be dependent on things that influence us that are not biblical. Alright? I say again, because our emotions and our interests can be influenced 
by things that are unbiblical, by things of people that are un unbiblical. So this is not the right question to ask. Um, Chloe, are you interested in McDonald's? <laughs> you are, right? Whoa, look at your face. <laughs> Do you think it's a good interest? <laughs> no, that's even worse. Right? No, it's not good because it's not very healthy food. Right? Well, it depends what food you eat there. If you eat salad, it might be good. Now, so interest does not mean good, right? Neither does emotion means good. So how do you know the difference between... Okay, this person is asking this. Uh, genuine interest and just emotions. I think I know what the person is trying to ask. All right, I don't know whether the person is in this room. Is the person in this room? Ichu? Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. All right. I think the person is trying to say, how do I know this interest is correct or not? Hopefully, the person is asking that. All right, that's why then the right answer is, how do you find out whether the interest is a correct interest? All right? Now, should you have, uh, Ilim, should you have interest in playing uh, badminton when school is going on? Should not, right? But would you like to? No, okay. <laughs> Always ask the wrong kid. All right, most kids will say yes, right? Now, so I think the person is trying, and if the person is asking, whoever you are, I'm afraid that I'm mixing out emotions with the correct interest. So the correct, uh, Justin, where, where are the markers? Oh, okay, thanks. The correct, the correct interest versus now I'm glad the person acknowledged that emotions this versus this emotions are not trustworthy so the person wants to differentiate all right then the answer is this how do you know whether this interest is correct or not is check against God's word that's all that's why today we are going to study the different roles and responsibilities in marriage because once you know that, then you know your interests are correct or not, right? My interest is badminton during school hours. How do I know it's wrong? It's wrong. Then the interest is wrong. That's it. But time to exercise, I'm, time to study, I'm interested to go to school. The interest is correct. Okay, so you must know. That's why when I tried to think about this, I was thinking, I'm going to teach you tonight about roles of husband and wives. Okay? So, Caleb, are you interested in roles of husband and wife? Not really. <laughs> yeah? very, very honest. But you must be. Okay, you must be. Because one day you will have to choose. Then you must know the roles, then you will choose correctly. Then you will know, Caleb, you will know, I'm interested in this girl. Is my interest correct or not? How do you know it's correct? I check it against roles and responsibilities of a wife. Okay? Understand? Or not? All right. Now, um, now, is there any difference between interest and emotion? Yes, I think big. Interest can be proper. Emotions can be just purely feelings. Does emotion change? Wait, next. Uh, CP, do emotions change? Emotions change, right? Okay. Um, do interest change? Interest also can change, all right? But interest is... What is the difference between interest and emotions? What do you think? Um, uh, next, Elaine. Interests are fixed. Fixed on what? Fix what? Fix activity. I think you are trying to say you actually choose the activity. You choose it, right? Now emotions tend to be something that is out of your control, right? Out of your control. You feel, you feel very emotional about a nice thing that you like, right? Maybe for some people, wow, you see the car, oh, you know, just very crazy over it. But you know you should buy a Toyota, not a Ferrari, right? You're very emotional about Ferrari, but, well, you know, your interest should be in something practical. Right? So yes, emotions are very dangerous. 
and emotions change. Today, you may really like the person. When in marriage and then the baby, uh, huh, the baby keep crying at night, and then you have to change diapers, and then your husband don't want to help, I think that time you're feeling about him is going to be very different. All right? So emotions change. But if you chose based on certain things, you chose. All right? um, you know why you enter into that. Okay, so, so there is a difference. So the person, to answer you, there is a difference. And you have to think of interest based on God's word. Now, the next one. Um, are, there int- are there examples in the Bible? What do you think? Next, uh, Kenny. Do you think that there are examples of love stories? I think the person is asking that. Got examples of love story in the Bible or not? <coughs> wow, the interest and then the emotion. Any? Love story. Mm, any? The person want example from the Bible? Love stories. Courtship. Mm. Huh? You can't think of any. Your wife. All right, Julia. Um, working for seven years. <laughs> working for seven years. Okay. Okay, who worked for seven years for the wife? Was looking for Leah, right? Then Eugene. <laughs> Who? <laughs> Who was it? <laughs> Jacob, right? Jacob and Leah, huh? Jacob and Leah. Yeah. What did he like about her? Anyone remember? Okay, Jennifer, remember. Hi. He liked Rachel. Mm-hmm. And then? He compared the two of them, right? He liked her eyes. Remember? He liked her eyes. Okay? So we're there. Then he worked very hard to make sure, although he got cheated, he continued to work. Right? That kind of thing. Well, there are. But by and large, I think most, most of them are not of a good ending. Can you think of one? The person was so in love that he was lovesick. He could not eat, could not sleep. Anyone here? Cannot eat. He said, wow, I keep thinking of the girl. Cannot eat, cannot sleep. Whole day just mop, mop around the house. Anyone remember? No? Okay, Joshua. I know Joshua. Uh, Joshua. Amnon and Tamar, right? Amnon. Amnon. In 2 Samuel chapter 13. All right, let's turn there. Okay, 2 Samuel chapter 13. Now, this is a story where in the beginning, if you read it and you don't know the ending, you think, wow, such a romantic guy, right? Now, let's, let's read verses 1 um, to 4. Shall we read 1 to 4? 2 Samuel chapter 13, verses 1 to 4, reading. And it came to pass after this that Absalom, the son of David, had a fair sister whose name was Tamar. And Amnon, the son of David, loved her. And Amnon was so vexed that he fell sick for his sister Tamar. For she was a virgin, and Amnon thought it hard for him to do anything to her. But Amnon had a friend whose name was Jonadab, the son of Shimea, David's brother. And Jonadab was very subtle. And he said unto him, Why art thou being the king's son, lean from day to day? Will thou not tell me? And Amnon said unto him, I love Tamar, my brother Absalom's sister. All right, so it was a half sister. And you notice the word love how many times? Verse 1 Amnon loved Tamar, loved her. Verse 2 He loved her so much he fell sick. Now, this one literally loved sick. Huh? So you imagine he don't want to eat. So you see, verse, uh, the next say, Why are you king's son? You're king's son and you can eat anything. Why are you going skinnier and skinnier? Ah. Love sick till like that. And they say, oh, because, verse 4, I love Tama. So, full of emotions, right? But you know the ending of the story. Okay? He raped her and dumped her. All right? So, emotions are very scary, very, very dangerous. All right? To him, it was just, to him at this point, it was just a lot of love. Why do you think the Bible used love? Who's next? Justin. 
Why do you think the Bible keeps using love? Is this love? No, not love. But the Bible keeps saying love, you know. How? Uh, to emphasize emotions is to emphasize the wrong kind of love. Right? It's the sarcastic way of saying it. Okay, so be careful of emotions. Now, um, and then another case is David and Bathsheba, right? David saw Bathsheba love as first sight. Actually, it's lust at first sight, right? So all these kind of things. So um, young people should be very careful. Go back to the word. Go back to the word, which we'll cover soon. Now, question number three. All right, so by and large, are they, um, does, oh no, I haven't finished this question. So, the person wants Bible example. So what Bible example can you give? Uh, next, uh, Ben. Right? The person wants Bible example of, of all this to choose in order that sh- he or she will know the interest is correct. The, Bi- the person wants Bible example. But most of the example are showing that emotions are very evil, can, can be very wrong. So, so how you answer this person? The person wants Bible, Bible guidance. <laughs> okay, so is it like how do we find out? You know the story about Isaac? The servant prayed that God will move the woman to go and the lady that will bring water and feed his camel, feed a lot of camels. And then? Ah, that's the one. All right. So how you want to pray those things? So the person said, how to know? Okay, don't trust in emotions. All right, don't trust in emotions. You pray for something to happen. <laughs> it's in the Bible. Okay, this is one thing that's very difficult because I covered this in a lot of details with those who were in, in Adelphi. So the sevenfold will, you know what it means. Um, now, that is something that is... You better be very, very sure. It's not something that you want to do now. It's praying for something that very rarely happens. So you cannot pray like, I pray that she will not tie her hair to church today. It happens all the time, right? I pray that, like that kind of thing. Maybe you pray that she, as she's walking, she will float up the stairs. <laughs> Must be something very unusual, you know? Very, very, very unusual. All right? So you dare to pray those things? Not really. Now, those are, very, those are things which I think we have to be very careful of. I'm not saying that you cannot pray for those things, but you have to pray very clearly. But before that, something must happen first. Because you don't go there first. Joash, do you start by praying for signs? Then what would you do? Alright, so your Bible example is compare criteria. Where are the criteria found? Hmm. Okay. Okay, I know even the King James Bible. All right, which 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 book and chapter? One we just read. Okay, at least it's smart enough. But the one we just read, Ephesians chapter five, right? Mm-hmm. Ephesians chapter five. Ask ask the kids here. Uh, Anna, where do you find the criteria about husband's roles and wife's role? In the Bible, correct? Which book? Which chapter? What do we read just now? Ephes- uh, uh, Jennifer. Ephesians chapter 5. Very good. Alright, so now, so the answer is correct. The person wants a Bible example. Don't use, we should not go and look, oh, look, Jacob. Oh, look, all this. How does God tell us make, in making choices? By using, okay, the Adelphi girls must know. Uh, uh, okay, ask the girls. Alright, Brenda. Where's the first place to start? What will? Very good. Preceptive will. So the first place to start is not to look for all these stories and all. What is preceptive will, Abigail? Oh, no, no. Abigail didn't attend. What is preceptive will, Susan? What is pre- preceptive will? God's what? God's known commandments. God's known commandments, all right? So the first thing to do is go to God's known commandments, all right? Before you're even thinking about prayer, about signs, praying about all those things. Just go there. If God says, God says, 
man should marry what? Elim. Man should marry. Man should marry. Yeah, that's right. You can say it. Man should marry a wife, all right? Man should marry a woman. That's presumptive will. Don't think of marrying a man or a woman marrying a man. It's known. Then in there, the next is what kind of characteristics in there, all right? So the first place to go is there. So the person wants Bible example. How does the Bible tell us about choosing anything in life? Start with preceptive will. That is where you start. Don't start with stories and all that. Okay? So, now, I, now I need to show you something. I need to draw something. Because this person asks, now, question number three, what godly characteristics must a male present before he is able to go into a relationship? Okay, so this one I answer male and female, all right? It's because the boys also need to know. What must he present? What must he present? Cornelius, what must he present? A diamond ring. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I need to draw something to, to help you be very clear in your mind about your phase of your, the different phases of your life, all right? So I need a lot of colors. I need many colors. I try to think of how to explain to you all in a pictorial form. All the BGR sessions we've been covering is helping you to understand as a single, how do you choose uh, a person to enter into a relationship with. So I draw. Okay? Hmm. So light. All right, single. Now, single. Okay? So single don't know how to choose all right single man see or single guy see single girl all right okay just in case you think i'm i'm promoting mini skirt <laughs> all right a single guy single guy thinking of a ah i see over there all these girls how do I choose? How do I choose? Do you remember? We use what? Wait, next. Oh, okay. So you're new, you're spared. Uh, okay, you miss also. Shenwei, use preceptive will, all right? So how do you put together all the requirements of preceptive will? We use the spreadsheet, all right? We use the spreadsheet. This is not good. Too little space. We use the we use spreadsheet, okay? You remember spreadsheet? You open an Excel spreadsheet and you write in there the different characteristics in the Bible that says this is a person that I can consider entering into a relationship for, with, right? So then you look at all the godly characteristics. All right, now there are three because we only covered one all this while. I tried to use different color. Huh? Three. Now, all the while we've been covering... Um, Godly, godly Christian, all right? Godly Christian. Uh, he must love the Lord, want to serve the Lord, uh, faithful, grow spiritually, knows God's word, that kind of thing, right? So because as you enter into courtship, you must make sure that is... Okay, maybe I'll ask the young ones. Mm. Okay, when you grow up, ouch, when you grow up, all right? Enoch, when you grow up and you want to marry someone, you have to choose, okay? What is the most important thing? She must be a... Don't say a woman, alright? She must be a... A what? A godly person, alright? Because many think Christian can already. As long as Christian, fine. So we covered last time, is a Christian good enough? Church, plenty of Christian. So-called Christian also. Plenty. Is it good enough? It must be a godly Christian. Uh, I thank God my niece just got married. I've known this young man uh, for a long time. He's not just a Christian, but he's a godly Christian. So I'm very happy. All right? So just don't think he's a Christian. So that, that, we covered that to death. Many things we covered there. Now, then, now we must begin to move to something else. Because, I, will, I, will, I won't tell you what it is first. I will draw out. Now, so here, after you say, yes, you've gone through the spreadsheet, you check. You keep your emotions out, all right? Keep your emotions out. 
you just compare his characteristic. Okay? Compare the characteristic, and then you say, okay. Okay. So now you move to boyfriend and girlfriend. All right? Boyfriend and girlfriend. Okay, boyfriend and girlfriend. Notice, no holding hands. <laughs> okay. Boyfriend and girlfriend. We covered those things, right? Why don't hold hands? Do you remember or not? Wait, next. Susan wasn't here. Uh, Brenda was not here. May I ask Brenda? Then, oh, no, I can't ask you. Really. Abigail, you were not here, but I ask you. Why? Okay, people say we are a strange church, but many churches also say this. Do you, do, do you think boyfriend and girlfriend should hold hands? <laughs> why? 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 Uh, I don't know. You don't know? Susan, why? You weren't here also. Actually, most of you weren't here. Might lead to more because holding hands is the first stage where you remove the barrier of. Um, physical contact, right? The first time you hold hands, it's going to be very electrifying. Then after some time, you get used to it, then you will rub shoulders. Then you stand closer. Then you sit closer. Then you begin to hug each other. Understand that? Now, if you never held her hands before, okay, if you never held her hands before, would you kiss her? What do you think, Abigail? I don't think so. <laughs> don't think so, right? Straight away, get one big slap, right? Because this never happened in the first place, right? This always breaks down. No one ends up committing fornication without starting with the initial, innocuous, seemingly innocent physical contact. Okay? That is why we discourage that. Not just me, many pastors discourage that. Some pastors may think it's fine, right? but I think it's foolish to say it's fine. Okay? So you know that is a problem. So, so you enter into courtship. Now, then from courtship, you will move to, move to what? Move to? So if, if all works out fine, then you move to marriage, right? Oh, I don't know how to draw already. Okay, marriage. You know why the, <laughs> it's wearing a veil, all right? Marriage. Okay, marriage. And then from marriage, ah, still not good. Okay, I, I cut down the, this part, you know they get married, okay? Not good habit. So they did get married. Alright, they did get married. Now, then, then what's next? Children. Right? Children. Maybe pregnant, right? <laughs> then children, correct? So it's standard. So, you make your choice. We covered a lot already how to choose. Those of you who didn't come, you can go and watch the video. Then, but to watch out in courtship, all right? And then, there are questions that you are asked here. And then, get married, then have children, okay? Should Christians get married and not have children? Next, which is Clara. No, why? But children are very expensive. You think so? Anna, do you think having you is very expensive to your parents? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> children are expensive. Let's not have children. Is it correct? No. Why? Because God says He seek godly seed, right? He seek godly seed. So God intend God bring people together that they may have godly seed. Okay. So it's part of the God's marriage plan. So you must have children. So now you know this is the these are the stages, correct? These are the stages. Then I'll answer your question. So this person asks. So now I'll ask you back. What, what godly characteristic must a male present before he's ready to go into a relationship? Let's change it to what godly characteristic must both, both parties have before they are ready to enter into a relationship. Now, those who are new to our church, do you all agree that courtship dating must always be for marriage? Abigail, you think? Must be. All right. CP, courtship for marriage, right? Not for buffet. 
Right? Buffet means I go and taste all the different, different kinds of boys, different kinds of girls, then, then I choose to get married. After I have so much fun, right? Now, but must you get married? So once you enter courtship, it's for marriage, right? Must you definitely get married? No. No, no, now you change your mind. Intention may or may not. How strong must the intention be? All right, you're really for it. I always like, like to talk to you because you have a lot of expression, right? You're really for it, right? You're really going to get married, right? Then you enter into relationship. This is the one, okay? Now, in order to be so sure, this stage is very important, correct? This stage is very important, right? This spreadsheet is very important, correct? Then, how do you know whether the really then it didn't work out? If you enter in courtship, can you break up? Can or not? But you should not enter into courtship with the intention to break up, understand? Must be intention, but at times when things you realize, because you ask, many ask the question, I'll cover up after. Things go wrong, should, must you say, ah yeah, together 10 years already. I hope no one caught for 10 years. Eh? Together for well, four years already. Let's just get married anyway. Should or not? No, all right? But that's why the best is enter in very carefully, correct? Now, so now I ask this question. Uh, stay with CP, eh? You say, must be very sure. To be very sure, do you agree that this is very important? Okay, so the next person. Eh, how can I go to Samantha? Samantha, now, in order for this, so now this stage is extremely important, correct? Because it's going to determine whether this is correct person and whether it will lead to that. In order to have a complete this, be only covered godly, which is, well, one part. Must be a godly person, one part. There will be three parts that, that this spreadsheet must cover in order to answer question number three fully. What do you think are the other two parts? You look at the diagram. What is involved? So this one will, set, this one will settle courtship, right? Godly, at least you know, I can enter into courtship, all right? But there are two more. What are the two other areas that we must evaluate? Yes. Okay, so can be father or mother or not. We are using another color so that, all right? Whether this person can be father or mother or not, right? Okay, after we talk about some criteria, you all give us, yes. Uh, whether the ability to have a child. <laughs> How would you know whether the person has the ability to have a child if you're not married yet? Uh, I know what you mean. Sometimes they may have a certain illness that they tell you. I need to tell you first, all right? I have a certain illness and the doctor told me that I cannot have children. Okay, so if the person say that, okay, Kayla, one day a girl you ch chase and then the girl say, Kayla, I have to tell you that the doctor said I cannot have children. Should you marry her? If she is godly. If she's godly, if God chose not to have, not to give her child, then, then it's not she don't want to have children. It's wrong. All right, so be very careful of girls, huh? or guys uh, who want to get married but don't want to have children. There are those like that. Are you like that, Justin? Not even thinking about marriage, all right, I know. Now, there are some who are like that, all right? They may pretend, but after they get married, they don't want to have, all right? So you must be sure. So those are different cases, all right? So Shenri, answer your question. So by and large, must have, but if not, then you must be sure, huh? you must be sure. Don't marry already, and then after that, every day, you are. Uh, all because of you, uh, you don't have children. You see, all the couples in church got children. We don't have children. What are you going to say, Jennifer? Eh, Veronica, too young to answer. Very difficult, right? Anna, what would you say? See, we cannot have children. And I love children. I want to have children. 
It's not God's will for me to have children, but I want to have children. What happens after you get married and find that you cannot have children? What would you do? We covered that in teens Q&A. You can adopt, right? You can adopt. Okay, you still can adopt. Now, but let's stick to this. So one is that. Another one? Okay, so must be. So she is addressing here. Alright, so I draw red colour. I match, eh? red colour. Red colour. Alright. Now, wait, who's the next person? Uh, CP done. Elaine, what's another criteria? Working and all that, not really. It's an overall umbrella. It's very straightforward. Huh? In order to have child, they must be what? Man and wife, right? <laughs> Husband and wife. So here is the, the color. Husband, wife, characteristic. Okay? Husband, wife, characteristic. Now, where do you find husband wife characteristic from? Because this criteria is all over the Bible. Correct? Godly all over the Bible. You can find it. What he should be. What she should be. So, not selfish, kind, but kind, loving, caring, all those kind of things. It's found in the Bible. But husband and wife, is, will he make a good husband? Will he make a good wife? Where are you going to find the preceptive will? <coughs> Kenny. Very good. Ephesians 5. Alright, so here, Ephesians 5. Understand? So you have three things that you need to use the spreadsheet for. Because most just do this part. Okay, la, godly. La. Good, la, let's just get married. Alright, there are the other parts also. Now, until you are clear about this, first part, second part, third part, you are not... Wait. Color, green, red. These three areas are going to be constantly there during courtship. Because this person says, uh, how do you know? Right, so you answer, how, what characteristic that he's godly will make a right husband or wife, will make the right father or mother. Okay? So must present all areas. So, during courtship, I color code. This one must be present. This one must be present. Well, I guess, to some extent, this one, can you, can you see or not? You can gauge at best, all right? Because don't have children yet, right? Then I'll ask you some questions afterwards. Now, so, throughout, that is what you need to keep checking. And like CP say, if got this one, but realize that, hey, this one are really, really very bad. Right? In, in church, see children, kick the children. <laughs> oh, you look so shocked. <laughs> All right? That kind of thing. All right? Or, or very selfish person, very self centered, will make a good husband or wife. Okay? Won't have the right kind of love. Then you know it's time to break up. Some people can appear godly, can appear like know God's word, love to study FEBC, come to serve in everything. All right? But actually, in this area, underdeveloped or absent. Okay? Then you should. After some time, you should break up. Now, I'll ask you this. So the person asks, what characteristics should the person present? All right? Now, ask the young ones. Wait, Jennifer turn. Jennifer? Now, if you go there and then you're in a courtship, they say, ah, yeah, got this. The person has, has this one, has this one. But don't have this one. Would you go ahead? No, why? Would you say, Never mind, get married, I think I can change him. No. You don't want to give him a chance in marriage, then change him. Why? Say again. Can't really change a person, the person may not change. Now, I ask you, if the person is not like that and doesn't want to be like that, any one of it, you think the chances of this person changing in marriage is high? Very low. Here, courtship, the person trying to win you or you're trying to win the other person already don't want to take advice, don't want to change. You think in marriage, after God you already will change? Very unlikely. In other words, I'm saying this. Maybe I ask, uh, well, I carry on now, this side. Uh, Veronica, would you buy a car 
assuming you can buy a car. Would you buy a car that has three wheels? No, why? Three, still can, uh, you know? Okay, put the spare tire there, still can. Would you buy? Three tires and one spare tire. Use the spare tire. Will you buy? No. Why? Why, Caleb? Why would you not buy such a car? Oh, so that it's a four wheel car. I know, I know some cars are three wheel. It's a four wheel car. It's a four wheel car. Three of the wheels are good. The fourth one, is the person say, hey, I don't have a tire, but you can use the spare tire. Spare tires are very much smaller, all right? But it will still move. Uh. Would you buy such a car? No. Why? Why? You know, why? It'll be weak. Huh? Wobbly. Oh, very good term. You know your wobbly husband. <laughs> a weak husband. All right words. All right. Perfect words. Yes. So please do not have the romantic idea that he or she will change. Hope that I can change. You know, your study literature, taming of what? Taming of the shrew. Huh? Taming of the shrew. I can tame her or I can tame him. I actually know of Christians who actually live like that. And they actually told me that, you know, when I married my husband, I really believe that I can change him. And I thought he loved me enough. Huh? God loves you know. I, he loved me enough and he will change for me. Very romantic idea. Don't ever have this. If it's not there, and you, even if it's, if it's not there at this stage, don't enter. No matter how the person chase you, however big a diamond ring the person flash in front of your face. All right? No, because it's not going to work out. Now, the problem is this. Many are fearful that they don't get married. Some guys are afraid that they can't find a girlfriend. Some girls are afraid that they can't find a boyfriend. Two out of three is good enough. It's not good enough. All right? Unless you want to drive a wobbly and weak marriage. Then you go ahead. Okay. So now, before I even go further to, to answer further, I want to ask you this question. What is the chief end of men? Who's turn next? Okay, Caleb. Eh, Caleb. Eh, Cornelius. What's the chief end of men? To glorify God. All right? Now, can a weak marriage glorify God? Jo uh, J uh, Joshua. Can a weak marriage glorify God? It will be very, very hard. Remember, your chief end is not separate from your marriage. Okay? So you must think, I want to glorify God in my life. And I will never choose someone that is going to affect me glorifying God. In other words, my chief end is so important to me, I would rather be a single than to end up in a life that I will not glorify God and my marriage will not glorify God. Is the chief end so important to you that you will say, I'd rather be single if the person is not the right person? Then that is your test of your love for God. Understand that? Because if we say, well, a lot of people getting married, one by one getting married, I just want to get married, I don't care then you don't love God, you love yourself. Alright, you love yourself. Alright, so I want us to be absolutely clear about that. Then you will make your choices. Then you will make your choices rightly. Okay, so now we move. Now, um, let me see anything else. Okay, so now, we will talk about what godly characteristics. We covered this already, please go watch the video, all right? So now we're going to cover this, all right, these two. What are some of the godly characteristics? Let's turn to Ephesians chapter 5. So that's where you're going to find it. No, don't turn that yet. Now turn to Genesis chapter 2. Ah, it's almost 9 o'clock. Okay, we're going to move fast. Very good, we're going to move very fast. Huh? Now, Genesis chapter 2. Now let us read. Chapter 3, sorry. Genesis chapter 3. Please read with me verse 15. Alright, 1, 2, reading. Genesis 3, 15. And, oh, no, sorry, sorry. Verse 16. Alright, my fault. 16. 
Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception, and in sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over you. Now this happened, this conversation happened after Adam and Eve fell. Understand? After Adam and Eve fell. Now God looked at Adam and Eve. Alright, so the young ones, listen now, this is very important. Everyone listen here. God looked at the woman and the man, and he said to them, verse 16. Now, to the woman he says, um, in your conception, I will increase your sorrow. And she said, your desire shall be to thy husband. And then to the husband, he heard this, and he shall rule over you. Okay? So God says after the fall, if the woman's desire will be to the husband, and the man shall rule over her. Who can I explain what this means? Next, Ben. Hey, Justin, have I asked you? No, Justin. Her desire shall be towards you. Okay, answer the second part, Ken. Then Ben will answer the first. He shall rule over you. He will be the head. So you say rule means the head. Okay, I think you answered the first one better. <laughs> huh? What about the first one, the woman? The woman, her desire will be towards you. She will submit to you. She will submit to you. Submit. Or she desire to please you, is it? Okay, what do you think, Joash? You think it's that meaning? After the fall? No. What does it mean? Uh, she, she desires the authority. She desires the authority. How do you know? She will desire. Alright, so the first part, her desire shall be towards you. God is saying, God is telling women. So I'm look, talking to the women. Alright, women, even girls. Girls, understand? Girls, women. After the fall, God, God tell, tell the women, girls, you have one problem after the fall. And this is going to be a characteristic of you as a woman. Your desire will be towards the man means you will desire to rule. You will desire his authority. This is not a good desire. It's not you desire to please him, you desire to be submissive to him. This desire is a desire of controlling him, dominating, ruling. Understand that? So women, do you understand after the fall, that is your problem? Do you notice in marriages, most of the time, Woman dominate the marriage. The woman makes the call, decides things at home, controls the man, runs the home, makes decisions. Do you realize it's very true? It's the result of the fall. So you must resist that. Okay? You must resist that. And to the man, God says, He says to the woman, He shall rule over you. Now this rule is not headship. This rule is one that he will be a bad um, husband. He will rule you without love. Understand? He, has, he don't care about you. He's a, he's a tyrant. Understand? So he's, he, this is going to be the problem with men. He's not going to be a loving husband. He'll be an uncaring husband. Okay? So men, where's the men? Boys. Do you notice that mommy is more loving than daddy? Most of the time. Yes. <laughs> okay. It's true. All right? In every home. Dad is very selfish, don't care. Now, most of the time, that's the problem with men. Bad hate sheep at home, do not care. All right? So that's the problem. That has become the fall. In other words, you now need to know what you must be aware of in your checklist. For a husband, if the man is a selfish, uncaring, unloving person, he has failed the criteria. The woman is someone that's dominating, very loud, very controlling, very self-centered. Don't go near her. Don't go near that man, don't go near that woman. Because the person is exhibiting all the problems that will happen in marriage that God talked about. Okay? Oh, too bad, that happened already. Finish. After the fall. No, not true. Now remember, the problem with the woman is... The problem with the woman is in submission, correct? 
in fact, want to be the head. Correct? The problem with the man is unloving, uncaring, bad head, bad ruler, bad head, bad leader. Okay? Now, so is it game over? Let's turn to Ephesians chapter 5. Now, Ephesians chapter 5, we read just now. Okay, now I move to, uh, move on to, uh, Justin. Justin, you want to try, all right? Because this is, has no history. Justin, we read Ephesians 5, right? What is the command to the wife? Ephesians chapter 5, verse 22 onwards. What was the command to the wife? Submit, right? Submit. You notice that God knows, God already said in Genesis, men, women will not submit. So now God gives the command to submit, correct? And then, okay, stay with Justin. Submit, and then to the husband, what is the command? Verse 25. Love your wives. Love your wives. All right? Love your wives. So God gave the command to reverse what is in you. Hmm? Now, is it possible to live such a life? Uh, I've been preaching Ephesians chapter 5, right? Shinri, what, what has the last, few, last part of Ephesians chapter 5 before it moved here? The emphasis was on? Say again? Yeah, replacement. But what was just before this? Ah, just before this. Yes, just before this. All right, next, Susan. Being filled with the Spirit, right? Being filled with the Spirit. Now, God says that for the believer, after the fall, for the believer, can you be a good head? Can you be a submissive wife? Can or not? Why can? Abigail, why? Why for the believer can? To be a good head and to be a submissive wife. Why is it possible? Because God gives us the Holy Spirit. With the help of the Holy Spirit, you can. Understand that? That is the point. So now, with that, we have to look at the criteria. All right? Criteria. So um, here, I'm going to draw this. Huh? So here... In marriage, there are two big umbrellas that you cannot run away from. Headship and submission. You cannot run away from that. Okay? So here, you must see this. Okay, look up here. If you want to enter into a relationship, if you don't see these things possible, do not even say yes. Let's answer some questions here. All right, so the person asks, next question. Um, hmm. I think I will cover it here. Let me see how I want to answer this. Okay, so let's, let's stick here. Let's stay here, right? Let's stay here. What golly? Now, let's start with the, let's start with the general, okay? Let's start, with, let's start with the godly part. Now, some things that you can write down to look for, all right? Now, is the other person interested in spiritual things? Because the person asks, what, what, what should he present? So you, you say, all right, I'm in church. A brother chased me. Or I'm interested in chasing a sister. All right? So first thing you ask, does the person like to talk about spiritual things? That's the sign of godliness, right? Right? Now, if the person, day and night, you meet, whenever you meet, talk about food, talk about dressing, talk about handphones, talk about holidays, hardly any spiritual talk. When you observe, you already know this person right off because it's not a godly person. It's a worldly, carnal person. Okay? That's why the group that you run with in church, be very careful, understand that. Even in church, there are, there are godly, spiritual, and there are carnal worldly Christians. Right? You hang out with the wrong group, 
most likely the person you choose will be from the group you hang up. Understand that? All right? Especially if you hang out with unbelievers, you will end up with, with them, choosing an unbelieving um, um, girlfriend or boyfriend. All right? So, so one, is a person interested in spiritual things? You will find, you will see this. Now, sometimes I tell you already, I think I have a problem. Because people can pretend, right? Now, Sunday night, when you all go up, because this is the time you observe, right? You observe someone. How do you know? In church, you observe what, they, what you all do when you go out together, when serving an old folks' home. Hmm? How the person treat the old folks? The old folks drop something, what does he do? No? The tendency. <laughs> or just kick the thing. <laughs> you know? What does he do? You see, I say all these are now, the guys know how to pretend already. <laughs> but you observe. You observe. You know, at dinner, what do the person just don't talk about anything spiritual? Then you know this is not a spiritual person. Right? What else? Um, does the person have mood swings? Watch it. Be very careful. All right? Mood swings. You know what mood swings, right? Uh, these are very dangerous signs because these are not godly. You know, you have mood swing uh, when in marriage, uh, day and night, you wake up and you say, What is the weather like? You know what's the meaning? Right? What's the weather like? <laughs> what's the weather like? Is it a good day or a bad day? Is the person black face or, or sunny? All right? So, watch. If someone is someone who's easily going to mood swing, someone who is spiritual, who is unstable, yo yo life, you know, yo yo, it's like up down, always up down. Sometimes close to God, then backslide. Then close to God, then backslide. Then close to God, backslide. Okay? Uh, these are very dangerous signs. Um, so I'm talking general first. Huh? Uh, does the person, is the person able to get along well with people? Alright? Now if someone, you find that, hey, the person really don't talk to any people, or only certain people, then you know this person may be a bit of a character problem, right? Okay? Or whoever you talk to after that become enemies. <laughs> There are people like that, you know? You think so? There are people like that? You only see them be close friends for a while, then, then you know they become enemies soon already. Now, these are telltale signs. Are they normal? Like, in other words, are they normal people that can get along with people, get along with everybody, be normal, okay? So these are some things. Now, I can't run into too much, huh? uh, but now I want to go specifically to, to now husband and wife. Now, so, now I continue. Where did I stop? Maybe Clara now, right? Now, you wrote this, right? These two very important. So everything, there, somewhere else. Uh. Oh, her, is it? Oh, you, okay. Very honest. Now, so you know is this. So please have this like absolutely clear in your mind. Uh. So with that, you know how to choose. Alright, so Brenda. Now a guy chase you in church. Alright, say, Brenda, I want to enter in courtship with you. Now, then you think, oh, so you think, hey, chip is very important. So what are the things that you will now next look for in this square. You know, you say, okay, I enter into courtship, it's for marriage, means one day I might marry this person, I look at him. What would come, some criteria that come to your mind regarding headship? Must be related to the headship, huh? Yes? Quick, quick. Godly characteristic, done already. Abigail. Oh, uh, it's behind, is it? Or oh, Clara? Is able to lead. Very good. Is he able to lead? He can lead. Is it good enough? Samantha. Lead what? First. Lead. Lead what? Lead spiritually, yeah? not lead in badminton or football. Right? So lead spiritually. And then, is it good enough? Samantha. The person, yeah, say, actually can lead. Now, I clarify, doesn't mean must be a church leader. Huh? If not, only church leaders get married. Right? I'm not saying a church leader, but someone that will lead spiritually. All right. What else, Samantha? A person can lead spiritually. Is it good enough? Think carefully. I can lead Sunday school children very well. So you think can lead is good enough? Mm. Lead the family, right? Some people are very good with children. They can lead and all that. But doesn't mean some people may be even good church leaders. Okay? But don't necessarily can lead the family, alright? Family leading is different things. 
All right. So now, what about this? Is something very important. Just write. No time to ask. Really. Can you look up to the person? So for the girls first, ah. Huh? Can you look up to the person? Can you respect the person? Now, if you cannot, the person may be actually quite good, but you just can't stand the person. All right. Now, actually, the person can't lead also. So please remember, uh, when you marry this person, you are going to have to. Why? You are going to have to submit. You know. If you can't respect him, you can't honor him. You see him as a, your little brother. It's going to be a problem. Now, some women like to marry men like that. Why? Next, uh, CP. Why? Some men uh, so that they can be what they are born to be, <laughs> lead the home <laughs> sinfully, right? So some women they like they will look look for men that are weaker than them. So after that they can tell them what to do, right? Then they will run the home. So if you cannot honestly say in your heart, I really respect this man, do not. Think of saying yes. Okay. Um, what else? What else? Next, uh, Elaine. Anything else? Any any criteria that you put in when you think of headship and submission? For the man. Okay, what, what made you say yes to Ichum? I put it the other way, easier for you to imagine. Uh, able, to able to teach, very important. I was hoping someone say that. Able to teach you. Alright? Because if you're spiritually strong and stronger than him, you're always teaching him. He's not interested in God's word. Half the time, he, he is like uh, lost when it comes to God's word. Can't get it. Right? So, it must be someone that you look up to spiritually, understand that. That, you can, that when you sit down, you love to hear the person talk to you, guide you, counsel in spiritual things. Okay? So you find that your conversations are mainly worldly stuff. It's very fun, you know? The person can tell you the best place to eat in Perth, the best place to holiday in Japan, the, the best facial product. <laughs> Every, all those things, you know everything. But hardly, when you sit down, you don't enjoy any spiritual um, conversations that, that draws you closer to Christ, spiritual counsel that, that stirs you to want to love your Saviour. Then He is not showing. He don't have this for you. Understand that? Okay, so remember that. Um, actually, now we talk about age. Uh, I, I wasn't planning to talk about that. Age. Age. Should a young a man marry a much older woman? Okay, I want to ask you all. In next, Kenny. Hey, Kenny. Yes, shoot. No. Why? Much older. Why? Because it's harder for the men to to Harder for the men. Now, not impossible, but when the age gap is very big, it, it can become a very big challenge. You think carefully like, if you really want to enter it. Um, the Bible didn't give what is the gap. <laughs> you know? But you think very carefully. All right? There may be some gap. So these things must be settled. Right? If you find that the person is older but very submissive, genuinely and all that, it's different and you can lead. But you find that you can't, then it's a problem. All right? So just be aware. I'm not saying there's absolutely no, but when the age gap is way too big, it's, it's very difficult. All right? Very difficult. Um, okay, so, so do you enjoy having spiritual conversation with the person? All right? So next, um, so for the man, uh, so is he mature or childish? Right? Is he mature or childish? Now, ch now, childishness seems to be the in thing nowadays, right? Do you agree? Uh, childishness or Ben agree? Ben not, he says. Yeah? It's like movies make men into childish men. Um, it's all like that. It's, it's like, it's funny, it's cute. But when you get married, huh, then you have marital problems, then you have challenges, then you need to make decisions. You see it's funny or not anymore. You find that you need to be the head at home. It's not funny anymore. All right? So as I say this, huh, boys and men, as I say this, you must start to imagine what you need to be. Where's Joash? 
Joash, how old are you now? Okay, I, okay, good. I'm glad you agree with that. All right, but how old are you now? Age? Hmm? 18. All right, so I think you do two, two years of national service, 23 years of university, then uh, 25, 26, then maybe you come out and work, 27, right? So 18 to 27, how many years more? Hey, did I calculate uh, rightly? No, I got it wrong. <laughs> okay, 18, then two years national service, 20, then three years of uh, work, uh, university, then 25, right? 23, 23 right? 23. <laughs> I keep thinking of a golden number. All right, 23. Then after that, you come out and work maybe 20, 24, right? 24, 25. Now, 18 to 25, how, old, how many years? Yeah, brother is faster, seven. <laughs> all right, seven years. All right, so all look at him. All look at Joash. Then Joash also put a mirror in front of myself. Not joking anymore, all right? Then Joash tonight suddenly realized in his heart. Joash suddenly realized in seven years' time. In seven years' time, will be a smiley, joking, jovial, playful Joash, hmm? which is your age. Seven years' time. You must be ready that someone look at you, he will think of, I can look up to Joash. We have spiritual conversation. Um, he actually says many things that are spiritually very, very um, enlightening to me, can lead me spiritually. He's not childish, right? He's, he, he, can make, he makes tough decisions, he's godly. Seven years only, you know. In seven years, that's how much you must grow. Same for the rest. Okay? Same for the rest. So, do you understand how serious it is? Hey, if you don't grow, uh, let me ask you what will happen. Joash, what will happen? If you don't grow to be such a man in church, will church have strong marriages? Will church have godly seed? For the future generation? No, right? Then, can the church glorify God? What's your chief end? Glorify God. Then all the men in your heart, you must say, I want to know and I want to grow because I want to glorify God. Understand that? That must be your passion. I want to be such a man for God. Okay, understand that? It's not a game anymore. Otherwise, the girls have no one to marry. Right or not? That's true. Okay, same for husbands who are, who are husbands now. Now, so, so if Joash or whoever in church seven years later after national service, after university, is still a dopey, joker, childish, playful, it's going to be a problem. All right? Okay? Now, so that's one. Let me see anything else. Huh? So it's very, it's very, it's very, um, it's very sobering, but at the same time, very challenging, right? Right? To be such a man. Now, let me see. Uh, what else I missed up? Okay, so now, we move. What is a strong leader? Okay, ask the girls. What do you think is a strong leader? Whose turn now? I'm, I'm totally lost already. Back here. Okay, what is a strong leader? Someone who listens, doesn't use brute force. Okay. Uh, all right. Okay, they don't jump to conclusion. They listen. And then, and then, and then what do they do next? Susan? A good... Huh? Who obeys God. Now, a person can, can lead or can do a lot of things. Oh, can plan for your you say, wow, this guy very good, no? Can plan for our finances. In how many years' time we will live where, we will do what, our children will go to what school, will be what. Wow, he's a good leader. Is that a good leader? A good leader is one that obeys God's word. It means a good leader, a strong leader is someone who when he needs to make a tough decision in obeying God and the family will end up in certain situation, he will make it. Okay, you must Understand that. Don't look for a man who dress well, travels a lot, and knows all the nice things, and can plan your holiday. So, wow, very good leader. 
No, right? So understand, there's a difference. It's a spiritual leader. Now, the other thing I want to say is also, okay, let's move first. Now, what about the, the men? Okay, now ask the men. What? Now, based on this, you know, this is the end point, end state. Submissive wife, godly wife. What would you think of? Uh, wait. So now start at jo jo uh, Joshua. Yeah, Joshua. What characteristics? We listed some for the for the men already. So now the woman will listen. What should I be based on this, this end state? Hmm? Okay, you look first, Justin. The question is, when you say this is the end state, then you are here, you need to choose. What would you see are the characteristics that must be present in the person before you say, now I want to approach the person and say, I wish to court you for marriage. What are some of the characteristics? You want to marry your husband? <laughs> for the, for, for, you, you are choosing. You are choosing, alright? You listen carefully. Perspective. You, you are choosing a, a wife to be. You're choosing a wife to be, Justin. You're choosing a wife to be. And what are some of the characteristics? Okay, jo Joshua. Titus 2. Titus 2. Very good. Titus 2, 5. To be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to the end of the word of God. Okay, so to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home. Right? Discreet, careful. Hmm? Not someone who is noisy, obnoxious, um, uh, childish, right? But the person who is who's very wise, very discreet. Okay? Chaste, pure. Keep us at home. You know what it means? You ask the, the woman, why is keep us at home, Joash, uh, Justin? They will stay at home and take care of the home. That's what it is. It is in the Bible. If the woman says, Hey, I am of woman liberation. I'm first, I told you, right? I'm first a woman, not a mother or a wife. I'm first a woman. So I'm a career woman. I am going out there. Please don't ask me to take care of things at home. All right? But the Bible says, Any woman who says the opposite, what does it say? Look at verse 5. So that the, the word of God be not blasphemed. Do you understand a Christian woman who says, I don't agree that women, especially with children, uh, to keep them at home, to take care of them at home, Christian woman to stay at home, it is wrong. The person who says that, God says, my word is blasphemed. You like to, you dare to blaspheme God's word? <laughs> God say, they are, when the woman say, no, I will work, I don't care, you are saying, God, I blaspheme your word. Okay, be very careful, be very aware. So the woman who says, yes, I, I look forward to taking care of children at home. Have children, take care of children at home. All right, so women, are you, do you want to do that? After you get your PhD and whatever Ds, or whatever P or H, right? whatever letters, then the temptation will be very strong not to stop work. Understand that? But remember the end state, submission. Okay? So... What else? What else? Uh, ben, quickly. I can't finish. Ben. Must be what? Must be wise to help you lead the child. Alright? What if the wife is like the child? <laughs> <laughs> then I, then I jala. Okay. Okay, for those who don't understand, jala means I'm in trouble. Alright? It's going to literally eat my strength. That's what I mean. Yeah, la, right? It will eat my strength. Okay, so it's true. Now, actually, I ask our girls, or guys, who likes to play with children? All of us like to play with children. Like play with children. Does it mean that Ben, you like to play with children? You like to play with children. Does it mean that Ben likes to play with children means Ben will be a good father? Doesn't mean, right? Does it mean that 
uh, whoever likes to play with children will be a good father or mother. No, please understand that. Liking children, uh, may I put it this way? Do you do you wash your? It's not hamster. What, what's the any, What's the pet you have? It's not hamster, right? Guinea pig. Do you wash the guinea pig, bathe the guinea pig, feed the guinea pig on your own? You don't. You don't. You don't wash it. Okay. Now, I remember all children. Uh, now, all children. Okay, it's okay. Now, all children, when they want a pet, I just had a conversation with some church people. They wanted the pet so much when I was having the wedding in Singapore. The children said, Daddy, Mommy, we will promise to bathe the dog, we'll bring it out for a walk, we'll feed it, we'll walk. Oh, a whole long promise. But the parents know, no, you're not going to do it. Do they love the dogs? They love dogs like anything. Doesn't mean you love children, you will take care of them well. Understand that? Alright, so, so please, please know. So don't, don't just see, ooh, that guy loves children, or that girl loves children, must be the one. Alright? Takes a lot more. Alright, what else? Keep us at home. What will come to mind? Keep us at home. Maybe ask the ladies. Ah. Okay, because done already. So back to here. Keep us at home. What does keep us at home mean? Lock the door. <laughs> Able to keep the home. Upkeep of the home. Housework. When you get married, it's like that, you know. It's not easy. So you think, well, pretty, tall or short, whatever you like, fat or skinny, whatever. Cannot keep home. It's not going to fulfill the biblical criteria. <coughs> Understand? It's important. So girls, you must know keeping up home is a calling. It's a very high calling. It's going to help your husband. God made Eve for what purpose? Uh, next. You want to try? God made Eve for? God made Eve to? Susan, God made Eve as a? A help. All right? These are things. Um, so, if the girl cannot do housework, means girls, you must aim, you must desire, you must... Um, long to be able to be good at doing these things because this is what you're going to do when you get married. All right. So a lot of Singaporean girls I know, they're very proud that they have mates at home. They're very proud that they cannot cook. You got to cook, you know. You cannot cook. They're very proud. They cannot clean the house. They're very proud. They don't know how to, don't know do whatever. They're very proud. It's very shameful for the Christian wife, for the Christian woman. All right. So. Yeah, if the person is not able to keep hygiene, now I'm not saying you should do this, but I just a flash just thought, ask the brother to take a photo of the, her bedroom. <laughs> ask the sister to take a photo of his bedroom. <laughs> then you see, cannot keep home. Right? <laughs> Will be a disaster. Right? So these are not joking anymore. These are serious. All right, ask the wife, married wives. Elaine and Julia, is it true? You need to have all these skills, keeping the house. It's so true. You know, the husband will be working, the husband will be serving in church. There'll be a lot of things that he will need your help. Okay? Now, what else about the women? Will he, now you look at the woman. All right? Now, if the woman is very dominating, very possessive, very domineering, very loud, would you marry her? <laughs> Even she laughed. Why not? Woman must be strong. Right? <laughs> no. <laughs> because then she won't be submissive, right? It's just the same. If the woman look at the man, I don't think I respect him. I don't think I can submit to him. It's the same for the man. Look at the woman. This woman is beyond control. I don't think I can control her. Right? Now, women who are, in my experience, women who, if they, you can tell if they are always wanting self, wanting attention, in groups, wanting attention, wanting to be self, self, uh, to be center of attention, always about her. Uh, if you're confessing that, actually both about her, then you have to be very careful. Mr. Person is very self-centered. Same for the men actually. A very self, if a person you observe in, the, in, in groups, in what, very self-centered, always must be center of attention, draws attention to self, won't be submissive, won't be a loving husband, will be selfish, 
because they just want attention to self, all right? So after I say all these things, you'll know how to act already, right? That's the danger. You can act, but it's still your funeral after you get married. Understand that? You can pretend. You can pretend. Okay, so that's the reality. Um, so, same for the husband. Now, headship means this, you know. Ladies, are you willing to submit to his headship? Means he tell you something, are you willing to submit? You look at him. You look at her. Will she submit? You have to ask those things. All right? Um, Okay, let's move. So now you see the link. Now we talk about children. We said a bit about children also. Oh yes, now I remember. Now, men, if the man is someone, actually now we move to this question. Huh? Okay, we move to question number. The person asked. Now how do I know a relationship is right. How do I know a relationship is right? How do you know? Now, if you find that, and I see this over time as a Christian, if it is a relationship that is meant by God, the criteria meant, things will be spiritually good. But if you find that in this relationship, you're always quarreling, right? Always quarreling, always fighting. Do you think you're edifying one another because the husband is supposed to sanctify the wife? Then the, then the man tried to tell, hey, you know, um, you shouldn't be so worldly. And then the girl goes into a tirade. Yeah? So man, every time you correct your girlfriend and she, she will fight with you even though she knows he's wrong, then you know the person won't submit. Or if you have a man, you sin and a man won't say anything. He's so afraid of you. Have you met men like that? Have you known like that? Very afraid. Oh, never lah. Oh, many. Do you know many men cry <laughs> in relationship? Very sad. They're so afraid of the girl. Um, and the girl feels very good. See, he's so afraid of me. Um, whatever I ask him to do, he will hurry up do. That kind of thing. Then you realize that you can't lead this woman. That's a problem. Okay? You're afraid of her then you know you better get out of this relationship because you know you can't lead her. Because some women are too strong for you. There can be stronger men that this strong woman will be afraid of. They can be matched. All right? So don't go too big a mismatch. Huh? If you know you're a strong woman, what should you do? Look for a very strong man. Understand that. If you're a weak man, <laughs> doesn't sound right, but make sure you, I won't say look for a very weak woman. Make sure you look for a woman that is ready to submit to you when you, when you lead her, all right? So these are things that, that are reality. So how do I know if it's always... Now, there are some relationships, when they start a relationship, so much problem, so much problem until I have to take them off service. You know? That, that's what happens. Because they can't... They, they are not even walking right with the Lord anymore. It's always problems. Then I have to remove service from them. A good relationship makes each other stronger. You will love God more, you will serve more. If you enter into a relationship and you find that you're going shopping more, holiday more, outing more, not coming to church, not going for Bible studies, and you begin to enjoy it, I think you better run out quickly before you change. Now I want to say this, you will change. You will change. I can't tell you the marriage counselling that really broke my heart. It was a very spiritual girl. No, no longer in our church. A guy, very worldly guy. Right? But both from very rich background. Hmm? So the person say, I rich, I rich, he rich. Very suave guy. Right? Tall, dresses very well, no pimples. <laughs> <laughs> no all the holidays. That kind of thing. That kind of thing? So he said, but still come to church. Ah. But very sad life now. Right? You visit the Facebook, just totally different. You will change. You will change. Because even your parents may pressurize you. Hey, you're a rich family, you know. Or your parents may say, Hey, that guy, uh, just, just degree only, you know. You got masters, you know. You know that kind of thing? Or somehow a bit different from our family kind of profile. 
Even your family may pressurize you. Even your friends in church may say, hey, that one don't match you. Uh. Understand that? Okay? You must be very careful. If the man is godly, meets this criteria, um, then choose based on that. Nothing else. Nothing else. It's just like you want to buy a car, four wheels means four wheels. It's have steering wheel. It must have that. That's it. Okay? Don't have anything less than that. Now, um, when is the right time for jealousy? Okay, I'll try to finish all. Huh? Okay, how do I know the right relationship? Okay, so all those are telltale signs. Huh? What is the right time for holy jealousy? I don't know what is this question really, but holy jealousy is in marriage. Huh? Okay? Now, I just try to interpret. The person say holy means the person is trying to say means I have right jealousy. If you are in courtship, yes, you should be exclusive. Now, if you find that you always, and you're rightly, justly jealous because the, the guy always flirt with girls, why do you want to continue, right? End it. So when is the right time for holy jealousy? The time to end it. <laughs> because if the guy is like that, why do you want to continue? But make sure it is not holy jealousy, yeah? Means it's because you just, I cannot, I don't want him to talk to any girls. I don't want her to talk to any guys at all. The moment I see him or talk to any girls or guys, I have holy jealousy. That's not, that is selfish jealousy, right? So, so that kind of thing. Now, this is very serious because this happens in marriage also. Then it becomes a big problem. Okay, it becomes a problem. And then the man can't serve, the woman can't serve, it becomes a big problem. Okay, so be careful. Now, next, it's long distance courtship feasible idea. I don't know who asked this, but I'll answer quickly. Hey, uh, in, um, is this from last year? Uh, it was dealt with last year. Okay, if you do not know each other, please don't. How to evaluate all this? How to observe the person? Through, through I don't know, I seem to wear a webcam and then hold it, watch it. I don't know. There's no way you can properly evaluate the person, right? So if you don't know each other, no. But if you've known each other for a very long time, then the person go away for a temporary work assignment or, or studies for a short time. Then you say, we are quite close, God's will. You can start, but you must be aware it's not easy. But you must both agree where you're going to stay, what you're going to do. All right? Don't, okay, la, start a long distance. Then mind, la, know each other so long, it's the right person. Then the person says, I want to go, to, I'm, I'm staying in Perth. No, but I want to stay in Singapore. Settle all those things up here. In your spreadsheet, all right? Set all those things. Now, what, can, what if I cannot find anyone to meet such criteria in the Bible? Cannot find. Joash still fail. No, no Joash won't fail, right? Joash, you won't fail us. I have a lot of belief in Joash. Right? Seven years. So, Joash, I will chat, I will chat with you. All right? But what if there is none? You cannot find any. What would you do? All right? Who's, who's the last one? Please, hurry up. Lost track. Uh, okay, CP. Yes. If I can't find, huh? Cannot find how? Say again. Stay single. Stay single. Correct. That's it. What is your chief end? Your chief end is to glorify God. Correct. Glorify God. Even if I get married, is to glorify God. Correct. But if I cannot find, then I'm going to get married and go have a bad marriage. I cannot bring up godly seed. Then I'm not going to glorify God. Right. So the only way is what? Don't get married, I can continue to glorify God here. Right? If you look, I don't, cannot find any. In the meantime, just focus on growing spiritually. God may bring the person into your life that you don't even know yet. It may be someone in church, it may not be someone in church. Right? Best example, Kenny and Julia. You've been in church for how long before you actually entered courtship? Do you remember? Four years. Four years? In the first, second, third year, were you even looking at that? Mm, maybe that one. <laughs> I know it wasn't, right? It was not even in your mind. You do not know. You just focus. So both of them were just focused on serving God, studying God's work, growing spiritually. Then God will put it in your heart at that time. It may be that, or it may be like you did. It's some of someone in another country. You're going to meet the person somewhere else. Or it could be someone that is going to come here and stay. You do not know. Meantime, just focus on growing spiritually. Don't keep plotting, planning, positioning. Let me text him. Uh. See how. Text. Oh, let me text her. Uh. Now, don't have this idea. Uh. Oh, yeah. So few left. This one got 2.5. Uh. Instead of 2.5. <coughs> it 
if I don't choke him or her first, you know, choke, choke means kind of pre-book. Right? I don't choke him or her first. Wait, if someone come along, then, ah, yeah, then I lose my chance, then how? Would you think like that? Please don't think like that. God is meant for you to get married and you want to marry a godly wife. The person is there. Hasn't turned up yet. Or you don't even know it's that person yet. You just obey God and grow. Okay? Don't plot and plan. You might ruin your own life and enter into the wrong relationship. So don't think, wow, that one older than me graduating or that girl has graduating or haven't graduated. Then I choke. Don't think of all these things. Just, just grow spiritually. Okay? But in the end, if don't have God wants you to be single, my aim is to glorify God. That's it. Now, I want you to, emphasize, I want you to realize one thing. Please turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 7. Quick, huh? 1 Corinthians chapter 7. Anna, uh, quick, quick. Now, I want you to be absolutely clear in your heart beyond any doubt because I want to say this to the girls. Girls seem to worry more about not getting married than guys. Both are a problem. <laughs> I'm not saying the guys not, not thinking about marriage is good. You should think. Girls think too much and are afraid that you can't get married. Now, but I want you to know not, not Pastor Joseph's theology. I want you to know your Savior's doctrines. Please look at 1 Corinthians 7. Now, let's read verse 8. Can we read together? Uh, sorry, verse, uh, verse 7 and 8. For I would that all men were even as I myself, but every man hath the proper gift of God, one after his manner and another after that. I say therefore to the unmarried and widows, it is good for them if they abide even as I. It is good. Do you understand? This is not me talking. This is God saying, it is, if you're not married, do you realize it is good? It is good. Oh no, all the married and look a bit worried right now. Now, this good is not saying, this good is a relative good. Understand that. Marriage is also good. But this singlehood, if God intends, it is actually better. Alright? God uses the word good, not me. Then, you look at verse 27. Okay, verse 27. Now, art thou bound unto a wife? Seek not to be loose. Art thou loose from a wife? Seek not a wife. Alright? So, the biblical um, default, not married, is good. There are a lot of advantages. Now, um, look at verse 28. But if thou marry, thou hast not sinned. So, it is not saying that marriage is bad. Huh? So, remember that. Nevertheless, such will have trouble in the flesh, but I spare you. God is saying now, marriage has a lot of challenges. I spare you of that. There is no command for you to get married. So women, you must not feel that I must get married. Society feels that. Your relatives feel that. Your parents feel that. But you must remember it is good. And my chief end is to glorify God. If I cannot find such a man and my life will be miserable, I'd rather not get married. Because I'm enjoying my walk with God now. Now, next, you look at the trouble. Look at verse 32 to 35. It says, But I would not have you without carefulness. He that is unmarried care for the things which belong to the Lord, how he may please God. But he that is married care for things that are of the world, how he may please his wife. There's a difference between, also between a wife and a virgin. The unmarried woman, see, if you're not married, careth for the things of the Lord. You have no burden. Huh? that she may be holy both in body and in spirit, but she is married carer for the things of the world. You have to worry about cleaning your house for him, cooking for him, washing for him, ironing for him, looking after the baby, how she may please her husband. There are many duties. All right? In other words, saying you have extra responsibilities. So now you think carefully. Yeah? You think of your life now. You can come to fellowship anytime. All right? When you come, you're not like Kenny, Kenny, whose eyes is half open most of the time because you have hardly enough sleep, right? Julia is always very, you know, thinking about you, have, you don't have all this. After that, you are going to serve. We, Sunday, you go to nursing home. They cannot at this stage. You can do so many things. 
for the Lord. You go back, you study your FEBC course, you pray, you draw close to the Lord. So, but you get married, you must have all those things still plus added responsibilities. That's why God said, it is good. Why do you want to get married so badly? Because Hollywood paints a picture of a certain life. Go for holiday, both dress very nice, go for fine dining, right? That kind of thing, right? Uh, all that kind of picture. So he said, I want that picture in my life. And I don't care even if I'm going to lose my walk with God. Not worth it. All right, so men, you also have to think, please, very short time to grow, all of you. All right, Justin included. How many years difference? Two more years only, right? So you got nine. That's it. By time nine, I hope that all of you are like I Chung, ready to, not ready to get I Chung before he was ready to get, ready to get married. All right? Kind of thing. Okay? So, all, oh, please remember. Um, so if you cannot find, cannot find. It may happen later. Okay? Now, next. Should I reserve myself for someone? Someone asked this. Should I reserve for myself for someone who is spiritually not ready for courtship? Is the person here? I don't know what it means. Reserve means what? Uh, I thought you want to choke, but you don't want to reserve. Now, I think this one is um, no. My answer is no. You reserve yourself for Christ. You just keep growing spiritually. The person turn up, the person turn up. Don't say, ah, this one. Actually, I know of people. Say, this one in church, huh? reserve for my son. <laughs> or reserve for my daughter. It's like, oh, wow. No such thing, right? It's the Lord's will. So you just focus on growing spiritually. Reserve how long? Why you wait until? Reserve for who? Reserve for Enoch? You know, <laughs> reserve myself for you until Enoch. For how long? How would you know whether the person will change, right? You do not know. So don't have such foolish thought, all right? Just keep growing spiritually, serve the Lord. Learn about Him. Is it okay to speak with the opposite gender if I'm not interested in courting the person? Is it okay? Am I talking to you, Jennifer? Hey, hey, Veronica, do I talk to you, Veronica? <laughs> she, okay, she looks so frightened. Sometimes I talk to you, just talk to you, right? There's nothing wrong talking to the opposite gender. Okay, I want to say this very clearly. Huh? Something is very strange in BPCWA recently. I don't know why the girls and the guys sit separately and sit separately still so not, it's not so bad. They don't talk to each other. How come at dinner, all my boys' table, girls' table, it's like red and blue table? The church never required that. Okay, if you like to talk to the girls, fine. But after prayer meeting, after fellowship, when you go out, it's okay to talk to each other. That's how we get to know each other also, all right? It's okay. But don't then keep personal texting. How are you? You like to eat this? Like... Okay, personal texting, okay, then it goes a bit, a bit strange, all right? Do you, who do you text personally? No, right? Would you? Right. Ah, yeah, you text. Okay, so some of you text. Some of you text Vincent, right? You text. I think you text him at least twice a month, personally. Vincent, I want to talk to you. <laughs> now that's a different, right? A personal texting and all that a bit strange. But please mix. All right, guys, can you learn to talk to girls? Girls also let the guys talk to you, so that you learn to grow. Uh, both. So all right, no such thing in church. Can talk to each other. <laughs> Okay, please. Why, why your donor? Because the boys are very childish. Ah? <laughs> <laughs> why you don't talk to the girls? Because they are very childish. Okay, I don't know why. Veronica, why? At their age, they don't, they're not interested. Okay, so learn to talk to each other. That's all I can say. Now, anything else? Any other questions you have? Any other questions you have? We passed the time. I just want to make sure I covered everything. Yes. When will it consider sinful lust? It will be considered sinful lust if, if in your mind you think sexual thoughts of the person. Right? That's what it is. It's sinful lust. Okay? Um, yeah. Now, actually, the last thing I say this, allow me uh, three minutes. I want to end because this is very crucial that I make it this clear. Now, look here. Uh. Have no mistake. I drew this to help you have a very clear picture in your mind. This face. This face. Uh. No, actually, this face. This face is 
finding, finding out if the other person is right. Understand? It's, find, it's confirming if the other party is correct to enter into a relationship. This phase is continuing to ensure that the person is what you think he or she is, plus being what you should be. But not a husband and wife, please remember. All right? You also have to start thinking, no? can I submit to him? Can I lead her? Does she listen to me when I tell her this is sin? Can I respect him? So this part, you also have to start thinking of, can I be what I need to be to him or to her? Understand that? So here is just checking the other party. He is check, continue to confirm at the same time as confirming whether you can be what you need to be to the person. Okay? But please don't act a husband and wife. Huh? We covered that to death. Huh? You are not husband and wife. There are no such thing. Here is this. What do you think this is? Abigail. This is check the other person, check their, continue to check their person and see can you be this to him or this, this to you. And here would be what? Here is acting out the response. Here is being what you need to be. Here is no longer is he what he needs to be. Do you understand what I'm saying? Whether he is what he needs to be does not change what you need to be. That's what I'm saying now. That is why this part, you better be very sure that he is what he should be. Otherwise, it will be very difficult for you to be what you should be. But you must be what you should be, regardless whether he will be what he should be. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> Clear as mud, right? So it's very serious. That's why this part is so serious. Once you enter into marriage, so we're going to have BGR session every year. I will start covering this thing. You must understand that once you're married, you must be that. No, He is lazy, bum, he don't lead you, he don't want to do family devotion. You still need to submit to him. You don't have a choice. So do you understand how terrible it is to enter into a marriage like that? You, when you want to love the Lord, when you want to glorify him, and the other party doesn't want to. It's a very miserable life. Now you know why? Then stay here. Then stay here. Okay? Let us pray. Now someone asked, what is the difference between psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs? Someone also asked, can we just have instrumental music? Can, can we worship God with instrumental music?